Thanks to Bunnings. This is how it looks at the back. Darius Boyd at fullback, Valentine Holmes and Blake Ferguson, the wingers. In the centres, it's Will Chambers and Josh Dugan. The halves, no calf problem for Jonathan Thurston tonight. He lines up alongside Cooper Cronk in the halves. Trent Merrin locking down behind Boyd, Boyd Cordner and Matt Gillett in the front row. Andrew Fafita returns to international footy alongside Smith, the skipper, and David Klemmer. And the bench, Morgan Trebojevic, Frizzell and Thide himself. Dallin Wateni Zalesnia on the wing alongside Jordan Rapana on his home patch here in Canberra. Jordan Kahu and Dean Fare, the centres. It's Kieran Foran and Sean Johnson. Great record in the halves when they play together for New Zealand. The Warriors combo there. Jason Taumalolo locking down behind Kevin Proctor and Simon Mennering. Jesse Bromwich, the skipper, alongside Isaac Luke. And Russell Packer in the front row. It's Blair Tapao, Kenny Bromwich and Nick Arima on the bench. Now, Russell Packer, he's a great redemption story. We're talking about a guy that he spent a year behind bars in 2014. Now he's helping the Dragons get to the right end of the ladder. Even some speculation out there today that he could be heading to the Tigers in season 2018. But he is the key performance matchup tonight thanks to Seabus Super up against Andrew Fafita. Andrew Jones. Yeah, both boys, big boys up, up front. They've been on life's roller coaster, both of them. Fafita... For me, he's got a bit of that X factor. You don't know what he's going to do when he gets the ball in his hand. Uh, he's got a lot to prove and a lot of faith shown in him by Mal Meninga. He'll be in for a big game. And the other bloke, Russell Packer, he's probably the form front row of the competition. He's a throwback to years gone by, well, and a nasty... He's got a real nasty streak in him. That's what you want as a front rower. Friday Night Football just got a little bit more serious as the Kangaroos and the Kiwis warm up for the last Anzac Test. It's 2017's version. A victory for Australia tonight would be their 100th Test win against New Zealand, and that's the first time any nation would have done that in the history of rugby league. We certainly are hoping that, that does not happen. Uh, the panel, uh, Monty Beatham, the King, Richie Bennett, former Kiwi skipper, 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 skipper. Uh, for, former Kiwi coach, Blue McClendon in the house for this uh -huh. one. Uh, the one thing we have talked about, and I, th I think everybody at home wanting, watching wants to see, is aggression. But as you said, Monty, it's got to be seasoned and settled aggression. Mm -hmm. If you can wrap up for Fita, do you go a long way to winning this game? I know that's putting a lot on one guy, but he's got that X factor, hasn't he, as a front rower? Yeah, he has, and it, he's probably more dangerous than Clemmer. Clemmer's quite straight up and down, and I think more straightforward mm. in tackling, whereas Fafita does have that offload. So he is the danger man in terms of their go forward on the starting pack. And particularly if they start well on the back of someone like him. Yeah, absolutely. And then you've got Trent Merrin, who's got a bit of footwork and offloading capability. So, and you've got your hard runners with Gillette and Boy Corner on the edge. Mm. So, they've got a, a good balanced uh, pack, the Aussies. And Merrin's got a point to prove. And he's come out during the week. He's been very vocal that he's saying that he deserves that loyalty and he's going to not let the uh, Australian jersey down. But the other thing in terms of aggression is you want is you want line speed. You watch the Australian line speed because they realise that that's the key part of it, the middle third, and they're going to be presenting a very quick line and plenty of numbers. How excited are you, though, with the two Jordans, Rapana and Kahu? They have been having really cool yeah. seasons right now. Rapana particularly seems to have a little bit of the Darius Boyd in him. He'll do something when you least expect it. I, I think they're going to truck and trailer with Dean Fudder and work it like they do in Canberra. So I think those two can really yeah. cause some, some uh, variation in their st style of play because they're both such talented players. I just hope he doesn't get caught up in the, in the mark of defence where he gets into dummy half and runs a lot. They will be very aware of that and they'll nullify that. I just hope they get maybe one out and just sort of change up a bit in the, how they get out of trouble. All right, we're not too far away from heading to GIO Stadium. The Kiwis are on their way out. What must be going through their thoughts? Monty, quickly, when you walk out of the stadium, what goes through your thoughts in a, in a trans Tasman showdown? Oh, look, you're very excited, but you're thinking about your role and what you need to do to, to benefit the team. Yep, just get out there and, and, and play with passion and, and spirit. Bluey, who has the biggest game tonight out of the Kiwis? Who's, who's going to okay. be the difference? Tom Alolo. Oh. All right, we'll take that one. Folks, here we go. It's the Anzac Test of 2017, and it's Friday Night Football with Jesse Bromwich and co out to have a crack at the Aussies. Nothing that we love better than Trans-Tasman Showdowns, and it's live on the home of the great game, Sky Sport. There's Packer. So New Zealand, they kick off. The Anzac Test underway, kicking down to the southern end, and Clemmer comes back really hard. Very strong run, inspirational from Clemmer in the opening, the opening carry of the night. And now for Ferguson, who, as I said, won the Sunderland medal in the Four Nations last year. Andrew Fafita now. 
taking it out on the third play beyond the 30 meter line he'll play it back to smith and smith will uh, take it ahead it takes it ahead himself i thought he was going to give it to clemmer for his second run on the opening set they're getting towards the middle of the ground and cordner chopping back in towards the back of the ruck looking for somebody a little bit lazy might be in there but not at this stage of the night and Kronk goes high and he lost it in the lights or something to Vasashek and it came down to uh, Bateni Zalesnia his third test match Ballon, the Penrith okay. wing through quarter. Now Roger Tuovasashek, who played the ball on the 10 metre line. Part of the spine that has grabbed a lot of attention. And certainly it would have been would be a major talking point with the Kangaroos. Let's not take them lightly. Luke, Foreman, Johnson, Tuovasashek. You've got a pretty good team out there. Built around them. And here's Taumalolo with. Uh, what appears to be a long sleeve jumper, but it's just the under singlet that's got the long sleeves. That was a really good set defensively, defensively from Australia, forcing the Kiwis to kick on their own 35. Now, Valentine Holmes' first touch looked dangerous. He's lost it. So our scrum's going to form. Kiwis coming in to congratulate those that were involved in forcing the mistake from the Australians from Valentine Holmes and the scrum will pack 40 metres out from the, the Kangaroos line. Yeah, just looking at the positional makeup of the Kiwis team because both wingers Jordan Rapana and Dallin Wateni Zalesniak play on the right wing for their club teams. It's Zalesniak that's gone across to the left side and he won't partner his club partner Dean Farre on the right side of the field. So Dean Farre will play with Jordan Rapana and Jordan Kahu will partner DWZ on the other side of the field. That's Fare with the ball now. Another member of the, the Panthers side. And Johnson sweeps it. Oh, gee, that opened up the rib cage of Kahu. And accepting the invitation was Dugan. Now it's with Mannering, one of those other captains that New Zealand have had in the same side here tonight. Bromwich then, along the line to Packer. He's 25 metres out from the Kangaroos line. A long ball and it's gone back on the inside from Johnson to Tamalolo. We're coming to you from Canberra tonight, the nation's capital. And it's the Kiwis on the attack as Foran comes around. Chilvazashek puts a little kick in, Boyd's got it covered. Watch the ball for me, It'll boys. Come out Watch to the, the 20. Keep in mind, there are no seven tackles in international football. So there's a few rules, actually, that I'll take you through as we go through the night, but this is one of them. This is only a six-tackle set. Yeah, it's still a poor kick there from Roger Tuvasashek. A bit of adrenaline in that one still. Possibly as Chambers takes the ball forward. Really let the pressure off with Australia now coming out for Lloyd Cordner. Hit hard. Proctor. Kevin Proctor. Kevin Beautiful hit by Proctor and backed up by Johnson. Now for Trent Merrin. And he'll play the ball in middle ground. Playing it to Cameron Smith. And now away to Clemmer and Clemmer to Thurston. Thurston away to Cronk. It's gone on to Dugan. And there's a copybook tackle over there. Johnny Raper would have been proud of that one from Jordan Kahu. It's straight out of the Raper manual, actually. And now the ball has been rolled over the sideline on the eastern side. Live and exclusive, the test match. The Anzac test match between the Kiwis and the Kangaroos. This is the Proctor hit. It brought a, a groan from Cordner and a, an equal groan from P. Sterling and R. Warren, I can assure you. And then the tackle from Kahu. That was once upon a time the way to tackle. That was the way the coaches all told you how to tackle. So the Kiwis then bring it out from the 10. Conditions are, <laughs> needless to say, a little bit cold, but Darren Lockyer is on the spot. It's actually not too bad for Canberra, right? It's almost perfect. There's, there's no breeze. Uh, the temperature's good. Just the grass and a little bit of water on it, which might make the ball slippery at times. Johnson in his 21st test match, and then a big fend from Rapana as he steps off blades of grass that he well knows. 
And he had played the ball about uh, 35 out from the line. Jordan Rapana, equal leading try scorer in the NRL. Bromwich away on the side of the ruck. And then it's gone away to Mannering after four and had a touch of the ball. Now they're 15 out on the eastern side, coming back to the middle. Four and kicks, right foot, and going down towards um, Chambers. And he's able to mark it and bring it down. No tackling mid-air in this uh, set of rules, which are the international set. You can't tackle a defending catcher in our rules, but this one comes across the board. Well, they look dangerous in that last set. New Zealand side, Sean Johnson found a bit of space down. A short blind side, and then Jordan Rapana coming in field off that. Ava Clement out tackled 25 metres out in the middle of the field in front of his own posts. Fafita takes it forward. Andrew Fafita back at test level after being denied a Four, a four Nations trip at the end of the season last year after winning the competition. And here's DWZ as Gus calls him, and he ran into a brick wall called Josh Dugan, with a bit of help from a bloke called Matt Gillett. Faray now. The test match there. Sorting a few things out here. It's, it's been probably exemplified by the ferociousness of the collisions. And here's another one. Gillett on Packer. Russell plays the ball. A scoop then by Luke. He, he had four and with him, and four and looked around for Luke. Couldn't get the ball away. 38. Down the middle. Here is Johnson. Johnson's inside. 20. And he throws a flick pass and hopes. Rapana's got the ball. That's too big. Watch the ball for me, boys. Watch the ball. Well, when you see Johnson do those sort of things, it reminds you of that uh, match in 2014 when he carved us apart. Well, he's had space on a couple of times now, Sean Johnson, and it's courtesy of his forwards who rumbled forward across the advantage line there very, very capably. They really bent Australia back in that set of six. So Holmes, Valentine playing the ball near the middle. Dugan almost got through some pretty ordinary defence on the edge of the ruck. And Cameron Smith now comes back to Trent Murray. He's one of the players that Mel Meninga stayed with. Club form, he'll tell you himself, his club form might have been down a little bit, but right. Meninga tried to stick with those fellows that did him and Australia proud back in um, 2000, uh, 2016. Now Foran has to go quick. Foran's going to be trapped. Line dropout time. Well, there's the difference. New Zealand have been down the other end on two occasions and kicked the ball dead. Australia get down here. They get the kick right, and they maintain the pressure. Lovely little dink there from Cooper Cronk, and the chase is excellent, involving the kicker. Foran himself, in fact, the six and the seven in their 21st test matches. Mal Meninga back in the coach's box. Michael Hagan alongside. Time you run, fellas. It was a brilliant kick. You probably would have anticipated a crossfield bomb, but he saw the opportunity, poked it in behind the line, and Australia can come back again. Fafita running off Thurston. Mannering comes out of the line to take Fafita to ground. We're just 30 metres away from the Kiwis line now, and it's David Clemmer. Keeping in mind that a couple of our recognised props are out of the game, so we're a little bit light on there, but Clemmer... And uh, his associate there, Andrew Fafita, getting through plenty of work early. There's Clement going to Fafita, then to Thurston, now to Cordner. Cordner brushes away from Farre, goes back to the middle, and he's pulled down over the top by Tao Malolo and underneath by Packer. And Smith goes across with a pass that finds Fafita, able to get it away, and uh, Dugan shrugs away from the tackle over there of Wateni Zelezniak. It's come back to Gillett. Gillett's trying to free himself. And he's put down eventually by Jesse Bromwich. Nine out. Australia attacking strong. Out from Cronk. It's gone out to Thurston. It's gone across to Chambers. He flicks it to Boyd. And Boyd loses the ball behind him. Valentine put it on the toe. And it's well, forced in goal. Wow. Dean Farre. 
Vorsing the ball, which I think was still alive, that ball, because it came out backwards from, I think, Boyd, and then I think it hit the boot of Valentine Holmes. Nice play from Thurston. Cuts out Boyd, goes straight to Chambers. He tries to get the ball loose in behind. Dean Farrow keeps his eyes on the ball and gets a handle on it, but it was a dangerous-looking play from the Kiwi, from the Kangaroos. Yeah, it was alive, all right, that ball. Was there for Australia, uh, for, run, uh, Australia. and Dean Farre shut it down. So the line dropout coming down awkwardly and taken carefully by Darius Bird. The ball now with Andrew Fafita. The player at about 12 metres in from the western side. That's where they are, just inside the 30 metre line. Thurston for Merrin. And Merrin is just outside the 20. They're working down the middle as they go across to Clemmer. He takes it up and invites the defence in, takes a couple to ground with him. Bromwich and Mannering. Now they go over to the blind side that's stacked and Dugan is with the ball. They marked up there the Kiwis. It was a blind side raid with plenty of talent in it, I can assure you. Here is Smith, now Thurston, run around corner, on the Chambers. Chambers has taken nine out. Five gone then against the Kangaroos. Holmes dummy half, Thurston to kick. Across the ground, look at Dugan fly high and bring the ball down. Boy, oh boy, this, this is not over and done with, but heavens above, didn't he get high? Josh Dugan. Well, he nearly did hit the heavens above. One of those kicks that are really difficult Kick to defend. Chase is onside. And the man with the momentum has the advantage, and it's Josh Dugan. All he has to do is put the football down. Josh Not... Dugan's taken possession and of the ball cleanly and grounds the ball in the end goal. Have a decision and going to the board. Well, it's going to be a try. Josh Dugan, the astronaut. And four points Australia. It took all their prowess, but then it was Josh Dugan, the centre, and flying so high. The things they are doing in this game today, quite amazing. 4 nil then in favour of Australia, the try at the 11th minute, and Thurston puts it between the sticks, and Australia lead 4-0 now after 13 minutes. Darren Lockyer, a comment sideline. Yeah, well executed play. I mean, th th this kick is designed to be away from the winger and the fullback and landed on the head of the centre, and that's exactly what Thurston did. Dugan had plenty to work to do. That's a great take. But a well executed try on the Harvey Norman replay. First advantage to Australia. Yeah, it's almost impossible to defend that because you're standing flat-footed and the, the men chasing have that advantage. Really good pressure built there. A couple of line drop out. Oh, an awful mistake there from Andrew Fafida. I'll knock on both ways here in New Zealand feed. So here's a chance for the Kiwis to level up pretty quickly. Well, how many times would Andrew Fafida hit the ball up from a kickoff in a season? And the one time you take it for granted, you spill your lollies. Look at that. How many times at training and in games would he take that ball? without even thinking about it. Look to get his hands in a really awkward position to take that. They didn't allow it to come into the body. And here we go for New Zealand. So Johnson going across, drifting across here at Canberra and picking up Jordan Rapana, who knows something about the place. Now for Isaac Luke. He'll play the ball, as you can see, pretty close to the try line down at the southern end of this ground. Here they come away to Proctor, and Proctor, he was taken low by Cordner. He's going to play the ball, as you can see, in the face of the uprights. It's gone to Packer. And 
Russell. Will play the ball, held in an upright tackle by four of the Kangaroos. Luke it is now, who spears it away, there's a chance. Oh gee, that was magnificent defence over there by Gillett. I thought he was through for him. Here's Johnson grabbing for Proctor. Batted dead there by Thurston. The Kiwis will be coming again in and, just a moment. And I think it's important for Kiwis' confidence that they hit back quickly. The last thing you want to be doing is giving this Kangaroos team a head start because they're great front runners. They've got such wonderful defence. The Kiwis have got to take advantage of this good field position. That man there has got to conjure up some points. Time you run, fellas. 6 0 Australia. You just joined us live and exclusive on Nine. We the Anzac Test match. Ball coming back with Watani Zalesniak, and he brings it back so hard to the 30 metre line. Just brings the ball back without fear or favour for anybody, including himself. Love him. So do I. Fallen across, Johnson on. And the two of us, check joins in, chance Rapana, but he's down. Put down by Valentine Holmes and Will Chambers. Beautiful pick up from Johnson. Now Taumalolo. And they lift him. Held his call. Ball loose on the ground. And Isaac got it away. Then four and now Johnson. Oh, intercepted. Put away your glasses. That's what Hang you would on. think. Hang Ferguson's on. very, very quick. Chasing his two of us. A check. 20 to go. He'll make it, I feel. Ferguson scores as he takes the possession out of the goal mouth at the other end and puts it down at the northern end here. Blake Ferguson. It was one or the other, right? If the pass gets past him, New Zealand score. Running down the left-hand side, foreign to Sean Johnson. He got up, he propped it, Blake Ferguson, on the Harvey Norman replay. Two of us are checked. We made a chase of it. And as you point out, Ferguson... Too much head start. The big long strides get him there. Australia scored their second. There he is, the try scorer taking Australia to a 10 0 lead. Blake Ferguson. So these really experienced outside backs, they just know that when the ball player digs so far into the line, you watch how Johnson goes right to the line. When he goes right to the defence like that, they know that he's either got to go out the back or go long. And Ferguson read it perfectly. If you want to go long, you've got to go early. If you dig into the line like that, you're not going to get past experienced wingers like Blake Ferguson. And he knew that as soon as Johnson got towards that green and gold line, that if he passes this, it's mine. It won't get to my winger. Interesting to note, Roger Tuivasa-Shek, he, he wasn't going to catch Ferguson, but he kept a straight line down around about the 10-metre line to make sure that Thurston has got this rather angular kick. Yeah, they've defended really well, that right side, Australia, from Gillette out. They had plenty thrown at them as Thurston. Straight through, Darren Lockyer. It was also very good work by Cooper Cronk. He has to work hard here. He's, he's been held, been held, but he, he gets on his bike and he allows Dugan to then go onto the centre and then Ferguson in the middle and then it's just a foot race. The bigger, the bigger man with the longest stride is always going to win that. Good, good reward for the effort. Time you run. You won the Sunderland medal. Now Meninga quite relaxed, but it could have well been that uh, we were about to watch the first of the Kiwi trials. He made sure that carried it, Andrew Fafita coming back. Turn to see now how the New Zealand react to that. Back on their heels, had a great opportunity. All of a sudden, they look at the scoreboard, and it's 12-0. Really got to dig into this. 
Here's Merrin. Playing it for Cameron Smith. And he on. kicks out of dummy half with the left foot bouncing down towards the try line. In fact, uh, Kiewelas' Shek, I think he was tempted to let it go. He didn't have any rear vision mirror, so he took it and then took the tackle of his opposite number one, Darius Boyd. And this fellow is an amazing, is an amazing uh, athlete. Bloke's much bigger than him, but he just runs at 100 miles an hour all the time. He just does that so well, does Cameron Smith, whether it's for Melbourne, Queensland or Australia. He'll kick off the points early in the count, get the ball down the other end, keep the pressure on. And now New Zealand coming off the own wow. line again. Well, that All over does it, the good work. It's against, uh, I think it was Josh Dugan, the offender. Oh, they needed that, the Kiwis, because they weren't going anywhere. The Australians with the early kick had got down there and bustled them. So the Kiwis kicking over into the Eastern Grandstand, named in honour of Gregan and Larkham. Grace the, the turf on many occasions. So this is Bromwich playing it down on the 30 metre line. And here's Packer. Russell Packer. And that's a pretty sloppy old play the ball. Here's Tamalolo. Big and strong. Joint Delhi M winner. And then Foran getting it away to Packer. So the Kiwis on the attack. Foran again shows it. Oh, got away from the tackle or the attempt from Cameron Smith. Five gone then. Played by Foran. Propped around the decoy. Johnson puts a kick in. And he has to put it dead. Holmes. And Matt Check in, in charge of this game takes them back for a line dropout. For New Zealand, it's important that the scoreboard doesn't get into their heads. You know, if they just stay calm and collected, one try was a kick, the other try was an intercept. Okay, well, we haven't missed tackles to concede tries. So our defence is good. Okay, mate. They can't start trying to play catch up this early in the game. They've just got to grind their way back into it. Play the balls in the opposition 20. 11 New Zealand, 7 Australia. You're watching the Anzac Test Match from Canberra's GIO Stadium. 28 metres out from the line, taken ahead by Bromwich, the captain. Tal Malolo then with a charge. Pulled down by Smith and Clemmer. And here's a penalty again. Penalty again going to the, to the Kiwis. Well, they've got a couple of good leaders out there to maintain their patience. Jesse Bromwich, Kieran Four. So here we are, 10 metre line, you can see. And then Foran goes with the dummy one way, and then he uses Bromwich on his outside. Bromwich held by Clemmer. Big bear hug there. Penalty. Hand on the ball. So the Kiwis another chance. Leading 12 0 Australia. More than a quarter of the way through the game. And here it comes from Luke out to Foran. Out it comes now. Johnson. Ball has gone to Farray and now it's back on the inside. And put down is the big winger Rapana. The Kiwis on the attack. Can they find points? Johnson away. The Tamalolo now in the middle. Jason, a couple of metres out from the pads. Isaac Luke, the dummy half. Over it goes to Foran. Out it goes the back to Avaza Czech. And, and then a crunching tackle over there on Jordan Kahu. Close to the line. They're five metres away. They come back and they're 12 away. And it's Russell Packer. Last tackle now. It's with Johnson, and he's got Proctor chasing. I don't know whether they'll get it back, though, Australia. It's another line dropout. Yeah, good pressure from the Kiwis, but wonderful defence by the Australians. And, I mean, really classy defence. They're reading the opposition's plays. They're all moving together as one. A couple of replacements now for Feeder and Clemmer leave the field. 
looks like Sabojevic is on. And I'd imagine Frizzell or Thayday is out there, just trying to see which one has gone on. Yeah, I think Thayday's out there. Adam Blair has gone on for New Zealand as well, with Packer leaving the field. I really think New Zealand have, have got to try and more, try to come up with something more than just setting up for those sweeps. They try and play around Australia, and I think they're going to have a lot of joy in what we've seen so far. So Cameron Smith with the line dropout that sits up nicely eventually for four in. And here's the captain bringing it back. Bromwich, his brother, a bench player in this game. And now for Blair with the, the hair flying in the breeze. 25 metres out then, and Luke goes over, finds Tom Malolo, and bulldozes his way down. 12 metres out from the Australian line. So then from Luke, it's gone on to Forum, it's gone behind Mannering, it's gone away there for Juvasacek. He's over, but held up. up on tackle four. Held up in goal. So it was on the third tackle. They'll go to the fourth play now, 10 metres back. He's an outstanding defender, Matt Gillette. This is Cooper Cron. Watch him get in under there just to make sure he couldn't get that ball down. He's come from two defenders away just in case he was needed. And he was the one that got underneath the ball there to hold it up. So this is Simon Mannering. One of the, the captains in this side. Former captains. And then it's batted on by the seven. Johnson, it's gone forward. I think I heard and a whistle. Over. It did. Here, Brady. Brady, mark. The check-in has ordered turnover. And uh, Rapana went sailing into the in goal. But Johnson's bat out there goes forward. So Sam Fide then. Getting the ball out to the 20 metre line. The Anzac test match then from Canberra. Trebojevic. Jake Trebojevic put down a, a solid hit then. And now Frizzell takes it out to the 40 metre line. There's uh, Jake. Now it's gone away to Matt Gillett. To play the ball four or five metres into black and white territory, the Kiwis. There's Trebojevic again. He's. Uh, He's a real goer, this uh, this kid. And now the ball stabbed down into the corner, occupied by Dallin Wateni Zelezniak, and they pick him up and walk him. Well, he wasn't walking, actually, his legs were dangling. And now it's with Jordan Kahu in those conspicuous pink boots. Well, that's the second time we've seen Cooper Croft from 30 metres out, happy just to try and find touch. That occasionally he didn't. Just backing their defence to force an error. Keep New Zealand at this end of the field. Jordan Tarner off his right wing coming in to help out. Marty Tapao into the action as well. I'm just wondering to myself what some of the old time footballers would be thinking of those boots. And Jordan Rapana, pink with white soles. A couple of the old fellas listen to be saying should be barred. As the kick goes high off the boot of Sean, taken then by Valentine. So Holmes will play the ball just outside the 20 metre line. He's got a pair of the same boots on, I think. Oh, that's hard. And Chambers, it is with the ball. Might have lifted a leg a little bit higher than normal. Blake Ferguson's done well. Not only has he got a try, that was a good run. Dugan at the 12th, Ferguson at the 17th. Now, Friday. He's gone straight through, Sam. Ten metres out from the line. Good run on fresh legs, and here's a real chance. Yeah, he's over to score, William Chambers. Well, that came off the back of a strong run by Sam Friday. A yeah, really poor read by New Zealand to play before. That allowed Sam Friday to go through. Pushes off Kevin Proctor on the Harvey Norman replay. Dean Farre, who'd raced in, got back quickly, but not quickly enough, and in complete disarray, Will Chambers. Pretty easy one, that one.
Well, there's the, the two men that paved the way for the try. The, the big run by Sam Thayday just going off your screen. And, of course, this man, Will Chambers, completing the work. Australia have a real habit, after a very strong defensive period, of striking back while their opposition feel a little bit disappointed. The Kiwis had a mountain of ball down the other end of the field, couldn't score a try. And Australia come out of that great defensive work and all of a sudden put an attacking set of six to get in from their own end of the field and come up with points. So Thurston has got the kicking boot on tonight and Darren Lockyer on the sideline. Now just watch this pass from Cameron Smith. He was the guy that got it out to Sam Thorday. He comes out, he just a little, little bit of double pump there and that brings in three defenders there. Comes in off his line and then Sam gets on the outside of Proctor. And he's very good at quick play the ball, Sam. He understands, hold the ball, get up and play it. And the desperation from Tamalolo wasn't there. He was never on side. And Chambers, well, he pretty much went over the line where the Kiwis were. Poor defence, but nice work from the, from the Kangaroos. Time you run! Darren Lockyer on the sideline. I well remember his maiden test match. I think it was out at North Harbour against the Kiwis. The young number one on that occasion. It was a wet night. And talking about Lockie and the man just passing the ball there to Kaboyevic, Cameron Smith. 815 players have represented in the green and gold. Only two. Hits Gillett. Gillett's away. He's got 10 to go. Defence comes in. Pass was an OK. Ferguson puts the ball down. Officialdom is saying it's OK yep. with Ferguson. I was worried about the pass. But uh, that, system, that they really can't okay, rule mate. on. They've got to call got it back no before try. this stage. Confirm he touches touch and line, They're saying mate, no try. And the touch judge stood on the, the sideline in goal where I thought he was saying it's OK. So let's have a look at it now. This is what the bunker is seeing. Ferguson... I thought the pass was suspect, Ray. Oh, I but, did too. But we're not going to that. I don't think any of the officials were in a position to call on the pass. Well, that looks OK from a rearward uh, view. Yeah, he's hit the ground well before the line and his knees come up, whether his elbow, that right elbow was on the line, maybe before... We can see the, the screen on the left shows that the right arm of the ball carrier is now touching the touch line. And the screen on the right shows that the ball is still short of the goal line. OK. Therefore, he's gone into touch. Have a decision and going to the board. Yeah, so. good call by the touch judge because he, he hit the ground early. He never got to the try line as he fell. He had to slide a little bit. And his right elbow has just hit the sideline. Russell, if you press the Good button, save mate. by Dallin Watteni Zelezniak. So a, no try no is the order. The scrum here, tackle four. He's had a storming start as Matt Gillett. Just watch, if we go that far, just watch where the touch judge stands here. After the, the try, yeah, he, everything they've seen is absolutely the way it happened. But then the touch judge stood on the in-goal touch line. And I was always of the opinion that when they do that, they're saying it's OK. But somebody tipped to the referee that He'd taken the chalk before the corner post. Yeah, I think he only went into the in goal because the referee couldn't hear him for all the noise around him. So he got a little bit closer to tell him that it was a no try and to check it. OK. OK, I'll cop that. But when I saw him standing in the in goal or on the touchline in goal, I thought, no, he's OK with it. They'll give this. Now it's with... Um, Darius Boyd. They've got a huge mountain to climb, New Zealand, but that would have been game over. They go 22, possibly 24 in front. Holmes now going centre field. Put in a good low tackle there. Isaac Luke driving. So Ferguson scored a try at the 17th minute. Just had one disallowed. It was a good run, though, wasn't it? Down the right side from Matt Gillett. He really, really, he's, he's blossomed into a wonderful footballer. Thurston goes back in for Boyd, and Boyd has his legs taken from him by Proctor. And now Cameron probes and puts a left foot kick on it. Awful thing to try and pick up. It's with um, Roger Chilvasa. Shek, and he's back.
Hit Come by on. Thurston. Oh, oh. He was clamped oh. over the top by Smith. Oh. So here's Rapana now. What about Jonathan Thurston? What's this, his first game in a month or something? After tearing a calf muscle? So he just comes back after a month out of the game into a test match. So this is Fare on his own 20 metre line and Martin to power. Playing in his 16th test match, I think it is from memory. Yet to walk us through a try. Johnson striding out. Rapana tried to get a kick on it. And the referee is going to order a turnover. Sean Johnson has become a very, very dangerous tackle five player. Tackle five is his tackle, particularly if he gets an opportunity to run and then kick or run and then pass. Sometimes if you go up trying to force him to kick, you force him to run. Smith goes up, makes him not kick. Now he's all of a sudden got some space down the edges. He's still, he's still talking a lot, Sean Johnson. It's a good attribute. You might be down 18 nil, but he's still talking, trying to keep the enthusiastic or the enthusiasm in the team. Yeah, I'm still not quite sure whether that's the, the place to hand the football over in that position. Rapana was going nowhere. Brazil. And that's only the third tackle against the Australians. And they're right in the middle of the ground and they're going over the 20 metre line and Boyd comes in, floats a ball away to Ferguson. Ferguson playing it back to Dugan. Now to Cronk. Is it along the line to Smith and that's gone all over the place. Thurston took it and then Cordner got the ball to Chambers. He's looking to get rid of it again, but he's going to be playing the ball 12 out from the line. He's developed into a very strong center, Will Chambers. First and then, ball came back. It's a try for Australia, I believe. Scored by Tyson Frizzell, is it? Yes, Tyson Frizzell. A yeah, kick that's jumped into the, the goalpost here, the big pads on the goalpost. Thurston. A little bit of a deflection, but that's what he was aiming at, and exactly the result that he wanted. Harvey Norman replay, Australia get their fourth. Well, here's our try scorer, Tyson Frizzell from the St. George Illawarra Club. And uh, a strong runner of the football. Led the side last weekend, I fancy. He did, he did. So he's showing leadership on and off the field. First into origin last year. He'll never forget the chase that he came up with on a runaway Dane Gagai. He's really blossoming as Tyson Frizzell now. Fully fledged representative player and 24 nil. Well, that's a huge first half from the Australians who weathered an early storm but are now in complete control. So, 36 minutes of the test match, the, the mid season or Anzac test match, and Jonathan Thurston converts to Australia 24, New Zealand nil. And Darren Locke here on the sideline tonight. This is a great example of Jonathan Thurston, what he's all about. He's always thinking, compete and attack. There he gets that tip on away under pressure, which gives Chambers the chance to get the quick play of the ball and then come back. And as Gus said, he was aiming for that little deflection from Mentoring. But he's just always a threat every time he's got the football. This is Trebojevic. Gee, that was a heavy tackle there by Adam Blair, the Kiwi. And this looks like... Frizzell again with the ball, 30 metres out, Gus. Yeah, they're not finished yet, Australia. They still think there's time for another one. Friday. They're ruthless when they get you down, the Aussies. 
Oh, no. Check and said no, 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 when no, you no. can, Sammy, come on. You know better than that. He was it's playing not, for the penalty. Yeah, no, it's mate, not the academies. On. Good try, Sammy. Well, they must score now, the Kiwis. They have to go into the sheds with something. 24-6 is still a long way behind, but they got to get something to work off into the second half. So four and will work the scrum. You can see the 30-metre line behind the Aussies. And it's gone from Johnson. It's found far away. And they take him to ground on the 30-metre line. Cordner combining with Thurston. Johnson a dummy hunt. Now for Kapow. And Martin will play the ball just outside the 20-metre line. Can they score before halftime? Oh, that looks forward to Blair. That was forward. They've let it go. And he'll play the ball in front of the uprights. Ten out. For him to the line. Got it away to town Malolo. And he bounces over and might have lost the ball. Check and saw it that way and said, play on Trebojevic. Well, yeah, but that's where they should be playing, Tom Malolo, out on the edge out there. They've been using him as a battering ram in the middle of the field. It's the first time he's gone over there in a real attacking position and got a good ball. He must have come down just short of the line and it's bobbled out of his arm. There it is. He looks to reach and over the top. Who was that? Gillett again. And Cooper Cronk down low. When Tamalolo gets that close, he scores. And somehow the two Australian defenders work out a way to deny. Cordner now coming down a narrow blind side on the, on the left of the ground here on the western edge of the ground. Now, Kronk puts a kick in that'll find touch. 15 away from the line. And we've got just under a minute and a half to go. Yeah, well, they've got some thinking to do, the Kiwis, because they've had plenty of ball at the Australia's end of the field. And as much as they've had ball movement from left to right and right back to the left, it hasn't really troubled the Australians. Maybe that run from Jason Tomalolo could just open up a new line of thinking for them because they've got to get him out on the edges. He's the most dangerous ball runner they've got. Just using him like a battering ram in the middle of the field, the Australians will swallow that up. Gillaroos and Ferns follow this match. You'll see that match between the Gillaroos and the Ferns immediately after Australia and New Zealand here. 24-0 in favour of the Kangaroos. Mannering playing it inside the 40 metre line. This is to power. Sort of halfway, about five metres short. Jamalolo. Gets those legs pumping and then hits the line. Now it's back to Johnson. Johnson away. Hooray! Ball went forward according to the touch judge. Uh, there'll be no more i wouldn't imagine both teams fairly keen to head for the halftime break and that's the way it is and um, a score line at halftime of 24 to nil and four tries to the kangaroos dugan ferguson chambers and frizzell Time. That's the score. The Kangaroos starting up the scoring on the back of a Josh Dugan going high after Jonathan Thurston. Look at this one. Nice. Look pretty to watch, isn't it? Yeah, it was the third set in a row. It started with Kronk uh, getting a repeat set and uh, yeah, lovely kick, good placement. Try assist, Sean Johnson this time for oh, that's right, Blake Ferguson. Right. Yeah, well, again, he, his decision making, Blake Ferguson was just right on song. Their defence on the right hand edge has just been outstanding. Uh, you saw Gillette come up with a couple of uh, great tackles, and this was again was just a brilliant yeah, yeah, What do you do in defence if you can't make the tackle? You get in the passing lane, and if the ball comes, it's yours, and that's exactly what it did. Was well, really fast check, not able to yeah, come. Yeah, that was a little bit surprising, but they weren't standing there. There was 12. No, Thurston with the 
kick in. This one here, Dean Fada commits himself, opens up an enormous gap for uh, Sammy Thayda to go through, and Chambers will uh, waltz through this one. That was disappointing. Yeah, it was. It was a real bad read. You know, it was a nice uh, option from Cameron Smith, very smart football, and they just got off the back of a Thayda quick play the ball, and Chambers goes in. Yeah, again, a variation from the ruck. I thought that block play was very good and then it enticed the, the, the outside runners to, to panic a little. And again, that defence, Samalano could have done a bit, better job by turning his back. Um, and all they were just in, in a bit of uh, uh, a bit of fluency not, not done with yet. Matt That's Gillette has been a more enormous on attack. How about defence? Well, this one not given. Thank you, Lord. I don't think we could have taken another one after this one. Blake Ferguson puts his uh, elbow into touch. Not given. Thank you. Still just 18-0, but only for a little moment here. Ferguson with a little kick through, and it goes to the post. And Monty, oh, look at Fritz oh, scores. A, a bit of luck against uh, the Kiwis in, but when you're playing so well and you're a hot team in a classy side like this, you put yourself in those situations that luck goes on to your side. OK, so Steve McNamara, the assistant coach, is also the assistant Warriors coach, former England coach, having uh, plenty to say to the Kiwis on the back of their halftime. 24-0, no one saw this one coming, OK? As we were quite open to say, we're very excited about this match, and you can still get excited, but uh, you used the word variation there, the variation of the play by the, the Kangaroos. Where is the variation from the uh, Kiwis? Uh, Phil Gould is going on. They're, they're saying, well, they should be playing Tamar a little wider. Yeah, 100% about that, but I but also thought we had a couple of opportunities where we attacked on the left-hand side and they defended extremely well. Mm. If those tries were implemented and scored, it could be quite a different game. So you've got to give credit to their defence their cover defence and their resilience to do that. Look at that. We should take a quick look at the numbers because it makes some really interesting reading uh, mm. because it actually... The, the Kiwi, Kangaroos have done more defence. Look at that. Yeah. 177 tackles with Bluey. They are winning the physical battle. More metres gained. Uh, Post-contact metres. They're killing it. That's right. They've had less carries and yet they're getting more post-contact metres. So it means that... One, they've got more options when they run and that enables a player to get more one-on-ones in his runs and, and, yep. and they're a bit more physical. And I thought the, I thought when they brought on the three subs and yep. uh, Frizzell, Trevojevic and Thide, you know, they Perfect upped the timing. momentum again. Perfect time indeed. And, mm. and I think if you think about the ruck play, because that's when the, those, those metres in post-contact, it's because you're winning the collision. But it's just, it's the roll-on that they're getting. OK, well, it's 24 minutes at half time, but the Rugby League World Cup is not too far away. We've got something special for you. The Rugby League World Cup is coming to New Zealand. The Kiwis are playing in Auckland, Christchurch and Hamilton, and there's a quarter-final in Wellington, as all roads lead to the final in Brisbane. A dream has come true, and the Kiwis are on top of the world at long last. Thanks to Tourism and Events Queensland and House of Travel, Sky Sport is giving you the opportunity to be there with the ultimate Rugby League World Cup final prize pack for you and three mates including flights, accommodation and tickets. Answer this week's question and go into the draw for your chance to see who will be crowned Rugby League World Cup champions in Brisbane on December 2nd. Gonna have that premium dolphin feeding cruise, don't you? Uh, here's the question for you: Which team won, and what was the score in the last World Cup final played at Suncorp Stadium? That went away pretty, <laughs> pretty nice to read it. Send your answers to Rugby League World Cup. That's rlwc2017.com forward slash Sky TV. We can't put that up again. Okay, never mind. Which team won, and what was the score of the last World Cup final played at Suncorp? We're back with more international rugby league. 24 0 the Kangaroos in front. Smith Cheers, mate. playing 50 tonight, 34 in a row, and joining Clive Churchill in second position with the most number of caps as a skipper. And a big uh, cheerio so high, to all the people involved in the city country match up at Mudgee. I know they had a function earlier. Ken Sutcliffe, I think, was the compare. And I know many of them are watching this test match with uh, interest up at Mudgee, where we will televise on Sunday. The final edition of City Origin versus Country Origin. 
And here's Adam Blair with a full head of steam, taking it up to the 30 meter line. Play back to Isaac Luke. Here's Tao Malolo. And look at the impact there, the collision with Gillett. But Jake Trebojevic was down around the lead. And now Johnson keeps it low and pushes it down towards the try line where Valentine Holmes brings it away. He is met by that charging brick like defense. And now for Ferguson. 24 0 at half time. Australia scoring four tries. From memory, I think that was the score in the final at half time of the Four Nations in November. They went on to win 34 8, but I'm pretty sure they led 24 0 at half time on that occasion. I think you're absolutely right. Dugan got a couple of tries in that. Oh, gee, if Sam thought I had have let that go, there was a two man overlap and they weren't impressed on his outside as Cooper Croc looks a straight down the throat of Jordan Rapana. So Rapana working the back and Cordner is waiting for him with Chambers. Both defending on the left side in the second half. This is Fare. Play back for Isaac Luke and then joining in for him. Here is Mannering. He's eight metres into the opposition territory. The high shot from the western side. To power. Four and now trying to get something going down the blind side, but he was, he was hit very, very hard by Matt Gillett. And Johnson goes to the skies. And Thurston could have easily been pinched for running into the line of a New Zealand defender there, but such wasn't the case. Chambers gets rattled up. So, oh, this has got to be a penalty. Yeah. Jordan Rapana, he had taken part in the defence. He was <laughs> running back to his wing and got in the road of everything. And when you obstruct to that degree, you've got to be penalised. Yeah, so city country, of course, at Mudgee, at Glen Willow Park, up Thanks, at uh, Mudgee. It's beautiful ground. It's, it's arguably the best league ground in the country country areas in new south wales tyson frizzell now just outside the 40 meter line playing it for the captain on his 50th essay and his 50th game i should say nine short of darren Lockyer's is 59. sam Thayday trying to crash his way through 25 out Jumps over the fall and tell Malolo. Clock comes away to Boyd. Boyd holds it back, steps twice, off the right foot, got it away. Here's a try for Jake Trebojevic. Wow, that is some that is some kind of a try. Have a look at the final pass from Darius Boyd. It's it's sight unseen. He throws it, just knows that there's a support player there, and it's Jake Trebojevic set up beautifully in the Harvey Norman replay by Cooper Cronk and Darius Boyd. Have a look at this final pass from Cronk it is, I'm sorry. It's Cronk. And the momentum takes the young manly forward over. Good. Jake Trebojevic has just scored his, his second test try. The number 15 from Manly. The brothers Trebojevic. A couple of very good players in amongst that Manly unit that is getting better and better. Yes. Thurston, he got it. It only just got over, but he got it. Comment sideline from Darren. Yeah, well, that try is a good example of when a decoy does his job well. See him, Matt Gillett just runs a good outside in line. He holds up 
Kieran Foran, and that opens the gap up for Darius Boyd. And then it's just all trust. The team playing with confidence. Trebojevic gets his on his debut. Uh, sorry, not on his debut, but he gets a try. First time for Australia. Well done. Time it, thanks, fellas. So 30 nil after 45 minutes of this mid-season test match, the Anzac Test. Brazil bringing it back in a, a great rush, about 15 metres out, and here is Gillett who's done some some toiling out there. A lot of the work that Matt Gillett does may go unnoticed, but um, he's done some explosive stuff as well tonight. There he is. Well, I think he's just about been the best out there tonight so far, Ray. For what his role is, he's been perfect. Trebojevic there and pushing it away out to the backs. Thurston just a couple of metres into New Zealand's territory. Australia looking for their 100th win against the Kiwis out of the 135 played. And it would seem a pretty safe bet that they're going to do it. 30 plays nothing. 30 three minutes of the match remaining. Here's Rapana. Knows there's no markers. He splits them, but the 10-meter line actually pulled him down. Frizzell and Smith. And this is Nicarima who's out there now. And the 16 is out there. That's Kenny Bromwich, and they're up to the 30-meter line. A little bit of spark from the Kiwis this time. And it's Blair. He's able to flick a pass out. Nicarima's there. Now it's back to Bromwich. Kenny again. And he'll play it 10 metres out from the Australian line. Playing it back to Nicarima. He's playing a dummy half, and here's the number seven putting a kick in too deep. Watch the ball, boys. Too deep, and it has been a, a bit that way tonight, by comparison with that facet of the game from the Australians. Well, that's the way he started the first half, Sean Johnson putting the ball dead, and you just can't do that at this level. Please don't get me wrong, he's, he's a wonderful player. You've, you've got to be a wonderful player to reach the heights that he has, including, I think, a golden boot at one stage. Dugan, he felt the shoulder there of Packer. Yeah, there's a head clash here, I think, Ray. Tackle three. I think the other player was Packer. I think so, mate. Thanks, mate. Oh, yeah, Packer's... Mellon got him flush on what appears to be the right cheekbone. Well, he'd be the last bloke I want to clash heads with. Not that I want to clash heads with anyone, but if I had to rank him in order, <laughs> he's the last one. <laughs> You've been clashing heads with me for God knows how long. You can't sit there on television and tell lies. You've signed up for five years, buddy. <laughs> five years. Jeez, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, you just be careful about slinging arrows too, right? <laughs> I've worked with you for a long time as well. Anyway, Dugan, Josh is coming off. With the Aitch, look at that, that head on Packer. You wouldn't like to. Yeah, I'm with Gus. Oh, yeah. it. Oh, the clash How many him. people in the world? Six billion or 20 billion or something? You have to run into him. Yeah, he, he, he ranks last. I, I don't want to clash heads with him. I'll clash heads with anyone else. Yeah, all right. So you ready? there's Michael Morgan coming out in jumper number 14 for oh, fellas, hold. Australia. And he's just slotting straight into right centre. And Trevojevic is linking the forwards with the backs over on that side of the, the rock. Smith comes into dummy half for Cordman. This side A, written by Blair and Mannering, Packer. First and now shapes the kick, swerves around. Cordner, that's something special, Boyd. Now Valentine Holmes puts a kick in. Couldn't have gone sweeter to Mannering. Now it's come away, and it's uh, Wateni Zelezniak with the ball. A little bit of football there. So Nicarima now, he sprints through. Runs into Thurston and Cordner. Johnson. Who is that? That's Proctor with it. Proctor. Yeah, we've got the tape round. Looks different without the flowing hair, speaking of. Adam Blair's got his tied up nicely. 
Grima then. Four and four into Mannering. Mannering's got support, but the flick pass has gone behind. And Wateni Zelesnia is ridden over the top there by Ferguson. So, back for Kenny Bromwich to kick. Yeah. Got, got that wrong. It might be a unique moment as Valentine comes back. Well, it's a sign of something, isn't it? They just feel like they're losing touch a little bit. They've got to hang in here. Well, Meninga throwing on the starting front rowers. Andrew Fafita and David Clemmer. Back into the game, 10 minutes in the second half. Boyd Cordner, again, driving in behind to play the ball. Mel Meninga, of course, as I look at the green and go, going around here again tonight. The only player to make four kangaroo tours. at Ellen Road at Leeds for his last appearance. 15 metres out now from... There he is, the big fella. Now they go to the blind side corner. Nice work for a second row forward, but it's gone over the dead ball line. And so it'll come back for this 20 metre restart. And again, I repeat, with just six tackles. We're playing under international law. And that is... Kiewasa Shek, 31 metres out, running into Andrew Fafita, Jordan Kahu, Gelatin Frizzell getting the job done. The second rowers, Bromwich, Kenny. So four. I don't think that was meant for Kahu. Pass opened his rib cage up and he hit him, Michael Morgan. But I think it was meant really to come to Wateni Zelesnia. So Nikarima. And then Fulham chips it into the corner. And Boyd, as cool as ever, circles his way or half circles his way back 10 metres out from the line. Ferguson running a decoy. This is Chambers, who was strong in the first half. Thurston, for feet. Just outside 30 now. Yes, Sunday, of course, you'll see City versus Country coming to you from, from Mudgee. It's a, a beautiful part of the world, and it's a lovely ground. It's a, it's a credit to the, the people of Mudgee. In fact, the whole town is it's a lovely place to visit. This cronk goes high, and Chuavasa Shek comes away. There's Josh Dugan with ice on that top right-hand side of the, the face. Just outside 20 now, down the New Zealand end. Fare taken down by Fen uh, by Profita. You heard the referee Andrew gets a hand off the ball. There's Packer again, just outside his 40 meter line. Now for Jesse Bromwich, the captain. Johnson, Chilvasashek, off his right foot, off his left foot, off his right foot, and Johnson streaks through. Oh, from the ground level, he's passed. But it's gone to Frizzell. Offside. But it's what a penalty quick, for offside. It's only one what about the footwork there of Roger Chuabasa Shek turned a couple of Australians inside out. Found Sean Johnson. And now slows things down, telling his players what is on, what they want. What? So you have a lot again. of time when you're trailing by 30. Okay, mate. Thank you. Oh, mm -hmm. Absence of Ben Hunt. Cody Mikarima is really getting a chance to shine. And here he is in top grade now, top company. That's him. The way it goes to four. Fires a bullet pass away. Johnson got Farre coming hard from the right. Tackled by Corden. Out from Kennebron. Back to Adam Blake. Peter and Summer dealing with him. Nicarina, Bromwich, 
Back to Mikarina. I'll go left. No, I won't. I'll go right. Now it's Johnson. Puts a kick in. And uh, they're going to probably trap Boyd here. Yeah, Boyd trapped in goal. We have plenty of rep football tomorrow out of Campbelltown, too. We've got the Pacific Island representative part of the weekend. Cook Islands will be playing PNG, Tonga, Fiji, England are out here to play against Samoa. And for those that can't get to those games, there is also a game between Lebanon and Malta on Saturday night at Cabramatta. They're playing for the Phoenician Cup. The 18 start at 5.30, the main game at 7.30. So that's Lebanon and Malta at Cabramatta on Saturday night. And then the City Country Sunday at Mudgee, which Rabbits has given a thousand raps to, Mudgee. I'm going with you wherever you're going for lunch on Sunday. <laughs> You've organised something, haven't you? Uh, Russell Packer brings the football back. Some disturbing news coming out from the sheds. Josh Dugan possibly fractured his cheekbone. It's terrible news. Possible at the moment, but... This is Blair. Poor news for St George Illawarra in New South Wales, if that is the case. So the Kiwis again, probing for the line. Johnson, Mannering, Mannering's over. Did he get it down? Rosell is clapping, so I take it he didn't get it down. And he was standing Bernie. right on top of it. The right defence tonight four. of Australia I have tried. has just been remarkable. Confirm the ball does get on the ground, please, mate. And they seem certain to score New Zealand. Somehow troops get there again. It's Gillett coming over the top. He lands short as Simon Mannering. And I don't think the ball touched the ground. Although the call is try on the field. You said that Simon Mannering gets into the goal with momentum. So there is no double movement involved. Now need to confirm the grounding. I think Michael Morgan comes in and actually gets his hand underneath. But don't forget, on-field decision is try. Yeah, and then it, it becomes pretty hard to see whether the point, in fact, touches the ground. Based on a live decision of try, we have a decision and going to the board. So... Green light coming. It's going to be a try. New Zealand on the board. With Bernie Sutton in the bunker tonight. Taking the on-field call from Matt Checken. So 30 to 4 with 15 minutes gone in the test match from here in Canberra. And Simon Mannering, the try scorer. Former captain, Jordan Kahu, the goal kicker for the Kiwis. Twenty metres out and ten metres in, and Kahu's very much a correct kicker. He seems to have wonderful confidence right through the art. Darren Lockyer sideline. It's thirty to six now. Yeah, well they've been threatening. If you look at Josh Dugan there, he's nights over by the look of it. They've been threatening to score down that left edge all night. But you know, nice little touch here from Sean Johnson. A few of his have gone dead tonight, but that one held up that got them a repeat set and they've been coming down this le left edge a lot Fo focusing on Cooper Cronk's outside shoulder this time Gillett can't save the try and on the Harvey Norman replay a bit of a boost for the Kiwis time your run fellas so the Kangaroos then with the job of kicking off after a try oh, oh knocked on by Kiel Vasas Sheck referee has said no play on <laughs> really Well, that's what he called. Let's see if we can find. Uh, there it is. There. Well, that's that's, that's got to be a knock on. <laughs> so critical at times, Ray, that we we pull up too many situations where the ball's been knocked back. But <laughs> I think that's the other way around. Wow. So. Johnson then taking 
the cavalry with him down the short side on the right of the ground. Faray played the ball. Johnson, he knows his runners are there, including Mannering, who's leading the chase. And he got a bump out of the road. Boyd takes the ball and comes to ground. Then he was tackled in midair, but it doesn't apply when the ball is bouncing and you've taken it on the bounce. Keep in mind we are playing under that international law that you can't tackle on the um, on the fly, either attack or defence. But not when the ball bounces; it has has no application. Here's Morgan, 35 metres out from his line. Now Frazell. John, uh, John Thurston kicking the ball down and oh it's come off the hands and gone oh he, he's thrown it back in field this could be embarrassing but he's got out of it it's Jordan Rapana well he's knocked it on he's tried to stop knocking it into touch he's nearly thrown it back to the Australians and then he's dived in field to save it now how many times has he got to catch this he knocks it on there now he's going to go over. Why he's trying to keep it in field after he's knocked it on, I don't know. He does really well to get it back in the field of play. And there's no one back there to get it, so he's got to race in to get it again. He's playing with himself. In a manner of speaking. Well, that, that was just the craziest 10 seconds in that man's life. Yeah, I'll be taking a short couple of <laughs> uh, Look at me, Rabs. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, in, after he knocked it on, why it was so desperate to get it back into the field. Of yeah, play. that's right. No, I take your point. That's probably not the funniest thing you've ever said. Here is Boyd, and now for Holmes. And he's taken down three metres out from the line. Well, maybe just this is the funniest. Ferguson had it across to Cronk, and now to Clemmer. And they're 11 out from the line. You know what I mean. Of course we do. We're grown men. Giggling like school children. Smith is for Fita. Just a meter out from the line. Smith deep to Crom. Oh boy! He took it, but I, I could see this missile coming, and it was Kahu. And now Kronk gets it on to Merrin, who's back there. He's 10 meters out, probably 12, Trent. After they fling him down to the ground from the collar. On the and Thurston stabs it in. Rapana's first there, but it's gone over the dead ball line anyway. And Nicarimu's. Should I say, Rapana speeds back to the 20 metre line and, and takes the tap. Three quarters of the, the match is gone here in Canberra. Chirvasashek at 30 to 6 brings it back. Now for Jesse Bromley. Tamalolo back on for the last 20 minutes of this game. He's Nicarima has done a really good job, finds the man. Flicks it across to Kieran Four and looking for a man back inside, no one comes. Good effort by Kieran, you know. He hasn't had a lot of football. And here he is taking on the number one team in the world. And he's matching it with them. There's no reason to focus all the blame on Kieran Foran. He's playing very well for a man on a limited preparation. This is Rapana. And he's lost the ball in the tackle. Check and says play on. Chambers with the ball for Australia. Ferguson. Coming in this second half at the 56th minute of the game, Simon Mannering getting a try, David Clemmer, Shannon Boyd and Aaron Woods unable to make it tonight because of injury. There it is again, fourth tackle, Cameron Smith, look at the, the line of green and gold jumpers confronting Jordan Rapana. There'll be some New Zealand players who won't be back by the third tackle. 
Giovanni Sheck. It wasn't hard to work out for the dummy half who to give it to. There was probably only one that was anywhere near ready to take a run. Wateni Zelezniya. Love watching him run. Jesse Bromwich. Part of that juggernaut in Melbourne. And leading the comp and they're giving every indication that the Proven Summons Trophy might be heading south of the border again. Ferguson, good chase on this. Mannering foot out. There's been a foot come out. Under the tackle of Mannering, Ferguson. This is checking the referee who I've sung his praises pretty much all season long because he he's really been down and out, but he's back now and he's the number one referee. And I've enjoyed the fact we've got one referee tonight. Yeah, it is good, isn't it? It is good. It just looks cleaner, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not as busy, it's not as frantic as it's not as, you know. These top referees, they, they can do it all themselves. Shortcut, same long with the pass one, please. The scrum will go down 20, 20 in and 10 out. And the Kiwis have all their backline members to the right-hand side of the scrum. And Nick Arima it is, who swings it across to Johnson. Johnson away to Tuivasa Sheck, and he is over. That's 10 tries at test level for Roger Tuivasa Sheck. Well, it comes after a pinpoint kick from Kieran Foran. Great pressure from Simon Mannering, and then a nice backline play that gets Roger Chulvasashek on the outside of his defender. Well, they certainly haven't given up the New Zealanders. They've had a spring in their step since half time, and they were looking at 24 0 at that time. It's now 30 to 10, but as I said, they're playing with exuberance. And here's Roger Tuovasas here coming back, having a long chat with Dallin Wateni Zelezniya. Tenth try at test level, as I said in the description of the try for Tuovasashek. His 12th test match. And now for Kahu. This is a test for him. He's 18. 20 out. There it goes. Looks simple, doesn't it? Put that in your family album. Jordan Kahu. So, Darren, a comment from you. Yeah, Sean Johnson, he loves to zip across the field. But in this instance, he had that straight runner, and that's what he's looking for. You see here, he actually gets across three defenders, then the one short runner that holds up Chambers, that allows two of us to check to get on the outside of first. He's so dangerous when he comes across field with his speed, but he does need that straight runner. That's what happened on that occasion. Talking of speed, you had some of it in there. There was a multiplication of speed, this fellow, and of course, Time you Johnson. run, fellas. Love watching Sean Johnson play. I sometimes wonder whether he realises how good he is. I think the fact that he's got four in with him now is going to help him. Do you agree with that, Pete? Yeah, this should be the time that he really is in his prime. He's an experience now, mid-twenties, been around a while, and he really should be playing his best football for the seasons to come. Here is Foran. Put his nose through the gap and then he looked for a runner on left and right. And it disappeared. Mannering away, Johnson on, Tamalolo. Conspicuous by his frame. He's such a big man, but he's got a big baggy pair of shorts on. Where it goes now for Johnson. And 
And oh, battered down. He put a kick on it before it hit the ground. Now they rake it back. Oh, that was as close as you come to absolute miracle. My God. Well, that was nearly indescribable. There's a bat down from Rapana. The kick is legal as far as I can see. It might have bounced on the dead ball line, but apart from that, it was still alive. He doesn't give up Jordan Rapana, does he? That's just fascinating stuff. Talk about, talk about ath athleticism. These blokes absolutely blow me away. I think it's a realisation, Ray, too, and I, I don't know if it was the case for many years where the ball has to touch the ground on the outside. Absolutely. It, I, I think everybody just gave up on it, but then when it was pulled up once, uh, you thought, well, hang on. Yeah. And obviously, you know, the one that all sticks in our mind, obviously, is the one for Sydney Cricket Ground, is Jonathan Thurston. Drives it down into the end goal. And we'll look at Thurston, an example for every youngster playing the game. He puts the kick in, perfect weight on it, but more importantly, he chases, he puts everybody on side. And so it's with Rapana now. Some of the things they do, that's fruit. They certainly are. Let's talk about that try up the Sydney Cricket Ground in the national involving Greg Inglis. Interesting to see at half time here, Greg Inglis having a chat with Will Chambers. Just going through a few things with him before Mal Meninga gave the, the team his talk. Matt Scott has come down as well. There's the other front row that I, I left out of a comment earlier, Boyd. And of course, um, Matt, the other one of the trio with Aaron Woods. So Ferguson. Now for Holmes. Twenty-two meters out. That's Chambers. Wide shot for you. That's where they were coming up. Out from just outside the 30-metre line. And Trent Merrin in there getting buffeted around. It comes away to Fafita. Out he goes the back to Thurston, but Foran right on top of Jonathan. Wraps him up, ball and all. Prompt puts a kick hard, point on point. And Tapao is about to come into the game. If you're a Telstra Mobile customer, you can stream the NRL live, fast and data-free as part of your Telstra Mobile plan and select recharges. Download the NRL official app now. Sorry, sorry. Telstra, of course, the major sponsor of our game with the Telstra Premiership. Cooper Cronk, bound for Sydney. With who will he play? With whom will he play, or will he play? Nikarima getting the ball away. This is the Tennis Lesney arc. 30 metre line. Nikarima thought he saw a little opening that he might have been able to get through. To the blind side. That's Ken Bromwich. Johnson. To power. Tamalolo. Tamalolo. Oops. Gillett got in. Now Johnson. Right side play. Ken Bromwich. And so that's a, that's a changeover. Those matches you read out earlier, big fella. Um, oh, fellas, wait, come on, wait. Other wait. matches on it. Do you say Campbelltown? Campbelltown wait, tomorrow. Fellas, Cook wait. Islands play PNG. Tonga play Fiji. And England play Samoa. That'll be three good games. It Gus the Samoan side is very more than competitive in that final month. 
Well, England will have to be very, very good to break them. Very good. Fafita playing it on the 30 metre line. Fide. Cooper Cronk with a limp coming off. Has England chosen a strong side? Have you seen it? Pete, Gus. Well, it's, yeah, it's a good side. No, Gareth Widdop hurts them. Tuovasa Shek. The Samoan side is chock full of, of NRL experience and very good players. That'll be a, excuse the pun, but it will be a real test. Here's Rapana, Fen Fen, the give. Bromwich got the ball on. Fare, Fare. He was like a tow truck there, pulling a player along there with him. It was Chambers. And here is Rapana again. Now Johnson again. Now Jesse Bromwich. Johnson, out it comes to four and chance. Goes in one side, comes out the other with Mannering. Ten metres out from the line. Five gone to the right side, to the middle. Kicked by four and very purposeful. But Chambers is equal to it. Yeah, the England team tomorrow, the Burgess brothers are playing. Sam and Thomas, James Graham's playing. I'll just read out the NRL players. The interesting ones was Chris Hyington. Chris McQueen's playing as well, Chris I think. McQueen's playing. Zach Hardacre, who had some time out here with the Panthers last year, is playing. And the rest are all from the English Super League. So, Marin... 35 metres out from the New Zealand line. And Thurston chipping it down into the corner where it's taken by Tuivasa Shek. 75 minutes of the match gone. 30 to 12 to score. So New Zealand have won the second half if they ring the bell now. Comment sideline, Darren. Yeah, I'm just uh, an update there on Cooper Cronk. He came off for a rest, but he's actually got ice on his left knee. But I did ask him, and he did give me the, give me the, uh, the thumbs up. So I think he'll be fine. OK, so here's Jesse Bromwich. It's Cooper. Yeah, and obviously with Cooper coming off, Michael Morgan slotted straight into 5'8", alongside Jonathan Thurston. Knock on. And advantage goes to Australia. Yeah, Chambers. It all became mixed up there between Johnson and another player. Is Valentine Holmes? He's almost been derobed as it comes across for Smith. Then for Fita, mannering up in his face. To power takes him to go. Trebojevic. Here's Morgan, linking to Boyd. Boyd pushes away one, steps from another, off that right foot. Now he goes across the ground. Now he... Oh! oh! Frizzell has been put down by Farway with an absolute corker. Here's Thurston now, getting it away. It's played by Chambers. Smith, Thurston, rubber kick, throw for Fida. He dives on the ball. The referee is going to have a look no, no. via the bunker. On table six, mate. But I think Andrew has no scored. Try. No, he's put, he's put the no try up. Well, he should score. And Australia do love scoring a late try in a test match. Chase is onside. Obviously, it's just whether he regathers it. No, he's lost it. There's no down with See, Andrew Fafita has lost possession of the ball in the end goal. Have a decision in going to the board. Just wait. Well, he's a fibber. 
<laughs> to his credit, he does sell it. <laughs> He's a fibber. What about this hit? 20 meter Dean boys. Faro. Oh, time out. Bang! As Gus would say, get that into you. There's a bit of Steve Maddow in that. Tyson Frizzell on the end of it. Yeah, and Dean's coming off a, a really bad knee injury construction last year. Had a bad knee injury and just been feeling his way through the first bit of the competition. And I give him a lot of confidence. New Zealand trying to push that ball. There he is. Not, he's not what you'd call a huge man. Frizzell is much bigger than him, but he, he just got him at exactly the right time. Yeah, that, those tackles are all about timing, aren't they? It's, sometimes you see the smaller man come up because they just get the timing right, unlike that occasion with Sean Johnson being pressured by the Australian defence once again, ball coming loose. Well, if Australia doesn't score here, New Zealand have actually won the second half. They lead 12-6 since the break. Look at this Samoa team tomorrow night. Tita Mataotia, Ken Mamalo, Joseph Leilua, Tim Lafai, Antonio Winterstein, Anthony Milford, Palmanu Brown, Sam Cassiano, Kaiser Pritchard, Junior Paulo, Sione Mataotia, Suaso Su, Josh Maguire, John Asiata is on the bench. Lisa Armao's on the bench. Bunty Afoa. Go, Bunty. <laughs> and Sway Matung. It's, it's a very good side. And I have to say, Gus was very good phonetically it's taking a, us through that. He sounded like Billy Birmingham. Yeah. And, and we found another pronunciation for the Matadia brothers yeah. as well. <laughs> Matthew Utah's gone again. Matadia. Oh, my God. That was brilliant, Gus. I'll be hard to beat. Team like that, they'll have to be hard to beat. I'd hate to be calling it. Here is Gillett. 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 Now he's short by a couple. 30 to 12. 90 seconds to go in the game. Some of his best work, the big fella from Penrith. Now for Morgan. Well, come on. So Michael eventually thinks he sees something to go through, and they, they tackle him and put him down. 10 metres away from the line. And it's over for Thurston, then he goes short, Brazil. The strain on this man is he's leading by 18 points, but he's still desperate to get it over the line. Again, well, this has come out to Michael Morgan, they've nullified the tackle count, and Foran has taken him to ground. There's 45 seconds, the Kangaroos, can they put one more on the board? Merrin shovels it down to Trebojevic. Thought he was in for a second, but the New Zealand defence closed up on him. And so Smith then goes behind two, Thurston goes behind two, and now it's Boyd. He's nine out, and we're 15 seconds from full time. Thurston shoves it over to Fafita. The feet up, gets it away, but it's going back the other way. And Trebojevic dives on it with a matter of seconds remaining. Smith, the dummy half, takes it ahead, gets it off to Morgan. Morgan get a, got the ball to Ferguson. Ferguson got a ball to Thayday. Thayday gets it away. Gone to Trebojevic, gone to Thurston. It's gone past for feet up, picked up by Boyd. They're not going to give up. Boyd puts a kick in. It might be a try. It might be a try here no, he for Valentine. He doesn't like it, Valentine. But no. Tackle five, mate. Yeah. No try. Confirm it's not gone, please. <laughs> kick chase is onside. So what went wrong, sir? Yeah, he's had a little knock on. The ball's been knocked on. on. Have a decision going to the board. Well, sometimes you, you pray these things would turn out to be tries, but we just lost something that really was entertaining stuff to watch. Yeah, well, Australia were far too classy in the first half. 20 took 4 nil at half time. It was a clinical display. But to New Zealand's credit, they've won the second half 12-6. Now it's whether or not they can build on that and their combination leading to the World Cup at the end of the year. It's a long way away. Players have got to get through the rest of the season and these teams might look very, very different at the end. But tonight, Australia far too good. And New Zealand, in mid-season tests, 
One yeah. off mid season test. What's it now? 17 of 18. Yeah, they've lost, they've lost 17 of 18. It, it, it seems to be, correct me if I'm wrong, but when it's a tournament that goes over six or seven weeks, they are much better. Right, Simon, uh, not the result you wanted. A good start, but then it fell away in the first half. Yeah, that first 40 really killed us. Um, yeah, it was, it was a fair grind. And uh, we probably failed to build enough pressure in that first half. And um, that was going to be the case at times. You know, we were going to have to do a lot of defence. And that first half wasn't up to standard. We led in for 24 points, 40 minutes of footy. Uh, I thought the guys bounced back in that last half. But uh, we can't let that go so far. In the first 40, we've got to be a lot tighter there. To the credit of the Australians, uh, line speed and defence was particularly good and sort of, um, I, I guess, snuffed out a lot of the attack. Yeah, I thought we were still winning the ruck with the footy. Um, but our big guys were still, you know, we won a few penalties there yep. and getting a bit of ruck speed. And it was just when we were down on their line, we weren't quite uh, finishing our sets well. We weren't keeping down the, them down there into the foot, football field and making it too easy for them to come down on our end and score points. So. Um, yeah, disappointing. You know, they, they played really well in that first 40. We've just got to match it when they when they play that well. And on a personal note for yourself, lovely to be back in the black jumper and uh, test try number eight. <laughs> yeah, it was, cool, it was cool to be back on the side after a couple of years out and really enjoyed the week. Uh, it's unfortunate because we had a really good week as a team and you know, a really good feeling going to the game. It's just unfortunate when um, that first 40 really hurt us. You know, we, show what we could do in that, that back end of the game and score some points and, and really get a roll on. But good learning curve for a lot of us and um, you know, build into that, that big tournament at the end of the year. Yeah, we're with you there. Good luck. Thanks, John. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, buddy. One more. Hey, Rusty. All well? Thanks, boys. Still recording, aren't we? You all right? Still recording. Righto, Rusty, uh, three tests in 2011. Seems like a long time ago. Yeah, um, it was a while ago, and um, you know, I've really enjoyed my week um, being around the Kiwis again and in that environment, and um, really treasured, um, you know, treasured the memories this week. I just took everything in, and you never know, well, you know, it could be your last time, so just take everything as it comes now, and, you know, I'm happy to pull the black jersey on and represent my country and my family and hopefully I'll make you know, my family proud. Rusty, I was sitting on the sideline there and I know the way you play and I wondered if you'd emptied the tank too early in the first half but I could hear you just yelling saying, give me the ball, give me the ball. Yeah, it was, it was a bit of a shock <laughs> to the lungs there, um, you know, being away from Rep 40 for a while but um, pretty good playing with Jesse. Um, you know, he's a great leader and just trying to work with him and um, we're a bit unlucky there with the intercept try and I thought we were building a bit of pressure but just a couple of things didn't go our way and you know that's the nature of football and um, this team will be back um, yeah. you know to fight another day so to speak so and I think um, there's a lot of a lot of courage there shown in the second half the scoreline could have got away from us but you know we fought back and, and we hung in there so it's, it's good to you know, build on that going forward. Well, one goal ticked off uh, in the Russell Packer story for yourself. Get back in the, the black jumper and another goal at the end of the year that can be pretty special too in the black jumper. Yeah, um, absolute honour to play for New Zealand again and that's my first Anzac test so it was great to be a part of it and, um, you know, hopefully I'm fit and I know I'm playing well enough to get picked for the World Cup. You know, that's a, that's a big goal of mine as well. So hopefully I can be a part of that and I'll be blessed if I can. Good man. Good luck. Thanks, Thanks brother. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate it.